2003 Mercury Grand Marquis with a 4.6 liter engine. Customer complaint is a high idle speed and a check engine light. Okay, we don't know the full vehicle history. This is from a garage outside of the school. And what we know from, from them is the idle air control motor has been replaced and they continue to have idling problems and in particular a P0507 which is an IAC system RPM above expected. So we're dealing with a trouble code of an idle air control. I don't know what the original complaint was with the owner of the vehicle, but we're going to address this P0507 trouble code. Okay, you see the code list? We want to ignore this P0511. I set that one in our testing before we shot the video here. Our P1000 code, that means somebody was in here and cleared the trouble codes out of this and not all of the readiness monitors have run yet. That's something to consider when you do OBD testing for emissions is if a vehicle comes in with a P1000 code and another code, you have to make sure that you're, you're addressing the possibility that this could have other problems that you just don't know at this point. So again, we're going to focus on this P0507. If I was in the field and I was selling this job to the customer, I'm making very clear to the customer that the P0507 is what we're attacking. And that's mainly because of this P1000 code. There could be other issues. You know, this could have an EGR flow problem that we have no idea because the OBD co computer has not tested the EGR valve since the codes have been cleared. We don't know what was in this car, and it's important that you make note of that. This P1000 code could end up biting you if you didn't mark that down. So what are we doing? We are attacking this P0507 trouble code. Only. Okay, I pulled up some data that would be related to an idle air control system fault. I'm going to start the car. Taking a look at some of these data parameters, top right is my idle air control position. This is a pulse width modulated or duty cycle controlled idle air control motor. You see the percentage number, and that number is going to start dropping. The RPM DES, that's our desired RPM, that's where the computer wants the RPM to be at. And our RPM is at 1100 and it's changing, we're down to 1000. You see our desired RPM is actually changing too. Initial startup on any vehicle, it's normal to have a higher desired RPM than a stable idle condition. Right away we see where our trouble code's coming from, that we have 1000 RPM actual and our desired is at 640 and so one of the questions would be what's the computer trying to do to this rpm it's trying to drop it but what's it trying to do as far as the idle air control motor goes you need to know what these numbers mean a little bit of insight fords again use a duty cycle controlled idle air control valve meaning it controls magnetic field strength of a solenoid. We can control the position of it. And a number around 20% on a Ford means the idle air control valve is fully seated or fully closed. So there's no air moving through the idle air control valve at 20% on a Ford. So there's a lot more info that goes into these valves. I'm not covering that with this video. That's section 21, sorry, section 20 that we'll be going over, idle air control systems, future reference. For now, let's focus on what's going on with this car and why. I pulled up one other data parameter and that is my throttle position sensor. And I have a TPS voltage reading of 1.14. And what you generally look for on throttle position sensors is under a volt at idle. The reason I pulled that up is that's a clue to what our problem is. That our throttle angle is higher than normal. And if the throttle angle is higher than normal, that's going to increase your RPM. And what's the computer going to do? It's going to try to reduce the RPM to what its desired is. 
and that's this number right here. That's where the computer wants it to be. You see we're at 19%, and that means the valve's fully closed. This is a problem, and this suggests that somebody was in this car and adjusted the base screw. You don't want to do that. Now, what we don't know is why. Is it possible that this car came in from the customer, had a stalling problem, they turned the base screw up to keep it running, of course brought it to a garage for a tech engine light and a trouble code, garage changes the idle air control valve, and was not aware of a customer potentially adjusting the base screw. I think that's what happened with this. Let's go a little further. Okay, this next part would be how to do a minimum idle check on a Ford, and that's on this design. Minimum idle speed, minimum idle check would be no air passing through the idle air control valve. That means the valve's fully closed, and then you set your RPM to four to 500 RPM. That'd be your minimum idle speed. On this design, all I need to do is unplug my idle air control. So I just did that. Let me get you a shot of where that valve is. Okay, there's your idle air control valve in this picture. Listen to the RPM as I unplug this and plug it back in. So that's what the valve plugged in. No change whatsoever. Unplug it again. No change. And so what that means is what we said, that that valve is fully closed and that 19% reading we had suggested that. Unplugging the valve made zero difference in the idle speed. That shouldn't happen on a good vehicle. On a good vehicle, when you unplug that idle air control, we should drop down to around four to 500 RPM. Again, this is unique to Ford. They don't all work like this. This one's a normally closed, spring-loaded, closed idle air control, and we can force a minimum idle by unplugging it. So what we have, is air is getting into this engine from some other, other source, and we believe, based on the TPS reading we have of 1.14 volts, somebody touched the screw and turned this base screw. Let's take a look. Okay, we're looking at our base throttle stop screw, something that should never be touched on a fuel-injected car unless you know what you're doing. And you can actually see to the left here on the on this little piece of all thread that somebody had a pair of vice grips on here. You see the shiny marks on the threads. And then to the right of this, let's see if I can get a shot of this, that you can actually see the Loctite, little, little bit of blue on the threads and the clean threads that are sticking out of the other side. So somebody definitely adjusted this screw and they did it improperly. Okay, so what is the proper setting for this? I don't have an exact TPS number right now. That would be ideal, although this TPS is also adjustable, so there's a variable using the TPS for the adjustment. If I turn the screw backwards, of course my throttle angle is going to drop, my TPS voltage is gonna drop, so that'd be one way. But the way I'm gonna do this is gonna be using the RPM itself with the idle air control unplugged, which is gonna force the idle air control in a closed position. So I'm gonna reach down and make sure this is still unplugged, it is. And what I'm gonna do is, just by the shininess of the threads, I'm gonna pull it back to where I think it was. Then we're gonna start the car and listen to the RPM. And we should be, again, a number I use, four to 500. From there, we're gonna plug the idle air control back in and we want to see the computer and desired RPM and the RPM match each other, and we want to see roughly 30 to 40% on this idle air control valve. And that's going to make me happy that this trouble code is going to go away. So this code is not an electrical fault code. And you saw in that data parameter I had up there, it said IAC fault said no, even though we have what you might be thinking is an IAC fault. That's an IAC electrical fault on the scan tool. And what we're dealing with is an IAC position fault where the computer's out of control of the valve. So I'm going to adjust that and uh, we'll see what it looks like.
can uh, one of you guys watch the threads on the other side for me and tell me when 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 I'm back to kind of where we were before? Is it turning? Yeah. Is that still live data on the scan tool over there? TPS voltage dropping. Um, Where's my TPS voltage right now? 1.11. So we're at 1.11. We're 1.1. We're dropping here. You know, this is not ideal tool here. A pair of needle nose vice grips would have been a little better, but where are we at? 1.06. 1.06. Okay, okay, let's see where that's at. And I have the idle air control still unplugged. Uh, let's go ahead and start this up. Take a listen to it. I'll just give you an RPM number here. We still have the idle air control unplugged, so looking at scan data is not going to help us yet. Yeah, go ahead. And where we want this thing to be at is pretty much just barely idling. We want to wait till this accessory fan shuts off. And I'm still about 700 RPM. So I'm going to back this off a little bit more. We can leave it run. And like I said, generally, generally under a volt on the TPS is what you'll see on Fords. Where's that at? 1.02. And we're at 500. 5 to 6, what's that number? 590. Five. 600, let's go just a little bit lower. I'd like to get down to about 5. Where's that? About 5. 500, where's my, five. where's my TPS? 1.01. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug this idle air control valve back in then I'll focus you back on the scan data we'll get some after shots we should hear an RPM rise when I do this you hear the idle air control motor start to react now let me get you back to the scan tool and what we want to see with this is a percentage of roughly 30 to 40 percent on the idle air control valve which is top right and we also want our RPM here and our desired RPM to match each other and what this is telling you right now is the computer is now back in control of this idle air control valve and that will take care of our trouble code for this call see the TPS is at 1.01 .01. so that, that's a little bit higher than other cars but Fords generally run the TPS a little higher than most and when I say in my book under one volt and I'm saying in general don't use that number as absolute on every single car so we're at 1.01 .01 now we were at 1.14 before it wasn't really enough to throw any kind of TPS fault code but as a guide that was a you know, a red flag that somebody moved the throttle, and that's exactly what they did. Now what we don't know is why. I think for this video it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it definitely could be that this car had a stalling problem, and ultimately it did have a bad idle air control valve. Ford idle air control valves, common to have sticking problems with those and random stalling problems, and it is a very real possibility that the customer turned up his own base screw before he brought it to the garage. I think what's addressed in this video would be when you have a idle issue or when you have too low of an idle air control count or percentage, what it suggests is either a vacuum leak or someone adjusted the base screw improperly. And so that's really what we've covered here. And also, really how to do a minimum idle speed adjustment. What I showed you is the proper way to adjust the idle speed on a computer controlled car. And in this case, there are differences in what you do model to model, but in this case, we unplug the solenoid. 
solenoid fully closes. We adjust the RPM, the base screw to 500 RPM, four to 500, and that's pretty standard. What's gonna be different car to car is how you force the outer wear control valve to close. I've had cars, sometimes you just reach in the throttle body and plug the hole with your thumb or your finger, and that'll force it to be a minimum idle check too. But how important is minimum idle speed? It's critical. I'm pretty happy with where we are with this. You know, and one of the things you can look at is this, this IEC number at 40. We don't want this to go too high either. You start getting 40, 50, 60 at idle, now you've limited what the computer can do with idle loads. But I'm okay with where we are. If anything, maybe we turn that screw out just a little bit more, which would lower this number and give us a little bit more control. But I'm happy with this. Hopefully you guys learn, learn from that because that really emphasizes, again, the importance of not touching that screw right there. If it's fuel injected, don't touch the screw unless you know what you're doing.